the exhibit was actually, or uh, uh, the concept was developed by um, a guy in, in, the, in NOAA, the National Oceanographic uh, and Atmospheric Administration, I think that's it, um, a guy named Sandy McDonald. And um, my understanding is that he was, he was playing in his backyard with his kids and he took a, um, a, a big beach ball and they were playing and he thought, wouldn't it be great to be able to have a three-dimensional piece to show uh, visualizations or images on, science data. So that was kind of the germ of the idea. And so he developed this, this large sphere and, and came up with the idea of projecting images on it. So we've got four projectors around the room. And so um, it's just an illusion that it's, that it's hanging. Um, it, it's our uh, NASA, what do you call it? NASA levitation, that's what it is, NASA levitation. And, and, the, and it's just the illusion that it's actually, actually spinning and moving. I wanted to share with you something that, to me and to all of us that work at NASA, is really exciting. Because as, as you sit here, and I hope watch what we're going to show, if I can go to the first one, Umar. We're in the midst of a scientific revolution that I think over the next 50 years we will all feel. And part of that revolution begins here at Earth. Because we recognize what is happening to our planet. And we're able to measure things that just 10 years ago were unmeasurable. So think about that. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't know there were ozone holes. Didn't know how fast the ice was, was shrinking in the, in the polar seas. Uh, didn't understand the way El Nino and La Nina work. These are revolutions in science that 100 years from now, people will say, wow. So this view of the Earth is something we can do every day from our constellation of robotic satellites. And what's neat about it is, to me at least, and we science geeks, you know, science isn't always bad, is the fact that we are the ultimate water planet. If you could design a planet to be big and hospitable to what we are, that's what you'd see. And the question is, are we unique? Are there lots of Earths? And that's part of why, why we actually have NASA, to explore that question. So here's Earth, the great water planet, everywhere you look here, from the oceans to the clouds, to the reasons these rocks are here and not underwater, is controlled by the role of water. Of course, we're largely made of water and other interesting hydrocarbons. So we watch the Earth now, the way we take the pulse of of ourselves or patients. So that's pretty cool. Next slide, if you will. So what do we do with the Earth? Well, we look at it in ways that our eyes don't see. This is a time loop of seven years of the biological productivity of our planet. We are a living planet, OK? How do we know? Because all these colors are representing how we measure biological productivity in the oceans and on land. And so the colors that are hot, red, yellows, Stuff is blooming. Phytoplankton growing in the oceans, the fish are having a feeding frenzy. The krill, the whales, the cetaceans, all these things are great. And other things we see here are these dead zones. Both on land, where, we've, where we're experiencing deforestation, the onset of, of arid land regions like deserts, but also in the oceans. And the great explorers of 500 years ago experienced this without knowing. They sailed from Europe up here down through these dead zones and actually realized that Holy gosh, there's no fish to catch.